I just picked up the Starlink Mini, and today I'll unbox it, set it up, test speeds, run it deep in the forest, try gaming on it, and tell you if it's even worth it. Plus, I'll show the costs, plans, accessories, and more. And you'll want to see what happens when I try this way out in the forest with zero cell signal. Plus, stick around because I'll have a link for you that will get you a free month of service and maybe even a hefty discount. So, let's check it out. We've had Starlink here on the homestead for over four years with the standard mount Starlink, but this is my first time seeing the Mini. I always love how simple their boxes are. On the inside, we've got the Mini dish, and as you can see, it is Mini. And what's really cool is it looks like they included a pole mount adapter that slides to hold the dish in place. We've obviously got the power adapter for 120 volt power. And I assume under yeah, here, we have the power cable. As always, they include really simple instructions, but you won't need that today. You just need me. The dish itself is about a foot long or 30 centimeters. And on the back, you can see it's hinging panel that allows it to be angled. But this is also where you can remove it just by lifting up and pulling out. And that's where we can add the pole mount, which will just slide into place like that. That's how easy it is. I'm genuinely impressed they added the pole mount function. On the inside, you can see that's where the power cable goes. And right here is a small plug where you can attach the ethernet cable. And that would allow you to connect an external modem like up here on our cabinets. But you won't need it because the mini has an onboard Wi-Fi router. To power it up, we'll take the cable, plug it into the block, plug the other side into the dish. Make sure you have the app and you can actually get it using your phone and the QR code on the box. We'll put the dish outside facing north and try to avoid trees. We'll plug it into power. And within a minute or so, Starlink will show up on your Wi-Fi, connect to it. Then all you need to do is open up the Starlink app. It'll automatically connect to the dish itself. And right now it's figuring out its correct orientation and connecting to all the satellites in the sky. You'll notice on here, it says low speed plan. We'll get to that in a minute. And within another minute, it's fully connected and online and it's just giving itself an update. That's literally how simple it is to set up. Now let's test it out and see how it performs. Starlink has been the exact product we've needed the past four years here on our homestead. Here where we live, there's no access to cable or to fiber and the only other options are those insanely priced old satellite dish internets. So for us, Starlink has been a dream, but a lot of you have been asking about the mini, so I thought I'd give it a try. Now the good thing is I have 30 days to return it like anybody, but I just did a test behind the scenes there and I'm gonna tell you why I may not. And I know you're thinking, you already have a Starlink on your tiny home. Why would you need another? And the thing is, I don't. But I'm a geek for preparedness, backups, and cool tech. But enough talk, let's test it out. It's perfect for people who say live in a van like we did for five years, go camping and require communications, or a thousand other situations you can think of. It's just starting up. And as you can see, it's perfect for travel. I would have killed for it when we lived in the van and it takes such little power. Right now it's only taking about 30 watts for startup. So it's booted up, now let's run a test. First, I'm gonna align it. So I'm gonna click alignment. You can see that it should be fitting that square perfectly. So I'm gonna turn it about 45 degrees that way. <laughs> Just like that, that was perfect actually, I'm impressed. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a speed test. So I'm gonna click speed test here. You'll notice it says low speed plan. I'll talk about the plans later, but when you first order your Starlink Mini, it will be set in standby mode, which is for us in Canadian $7 a month, and basically means it's for really low speed data, but let's see how low. I'm gonna go down to advanced, connect my phone to the internet and run the test here. So it's showing about uh, 700 megabit a second. Uh, now one megabit a second. That I would have killed for when I was like 11 years old and we had dial up. Could you imagine having that speed today? Just in a standby mode for seven bucks. We'll test out how well that does on your apps like YouTube and stuff like that. But it's got about 700 megabit per second upload and a very low latency of 23. Don't worry about that till we get into the nitty gritty later. So we're gonna start up YouTube. We're gonna see how long it takes to load a short. I just clicked it. Remember, this is low speed connection. So fruit flies actually okay. lay their eggs 
That took a little while, but it still works. Now, obviously that's not ideal. So you can switch it anytime between the different plans. There's the standby mode, there's Roam Unlimited, so unlimited internet bandwidth, as well as Roam 50 gig. It all depends on what you're gonna use it for. That may seem like a step backwards. All internet, now that's 2025, should be unlimited, right? The thing is you're paying for a premium mobile product you can take almost anywhere in the world. So the price is gonna reflect that. Now let's take a look at the real speeds on the Roam plan and how they perform. But first I'm gonna ask you to like this video. It helps me out and make sure I can bring free content to you guys. And if you like anything we do here on the homestead, we do everything ourselves from scratch. Make sure you subscribe. So the Roam plan just activated and we're gonna do a quick speed test. So I'm gonna select speed test and start. Already so much faster. And by the end of it, we actually hit over 200 megabit a second. We have 22 megabyte per second upload, which is the same as our residential Starlink. That's impressive. And a pretty moderate 60 millisecond latency. But now let's push it to the limit by streaming video and gaming. So to test it, I've got two laptops, a phone and a tablet going. I've got YouTube video going here in 1080p, 1080p movie off of Amazon streaming, as well as a 1080p uh, YouTube video here of the, our Starlink install. And you can see that there's a throughput of about 50 megabit per second at time. It's doing really well. Not one of these has buffered or hitched whatsoever, which is very impressive for that onboard Wi-Fi. So it can handle this no problem, but I always get asked about gaming. Oh, you have to admit, this is one of the crazier things you've seen in a while. And just to show you, I have absolutely no bars whatsoever for cellular. Yeah. So we've got the Starlink set up off the battery bank. So is the laptop. We have an okay view of the sky and we're running my laptop and we'll give it a quick test on a new game. If you don't care about this part, skip to this time in the video for the Starlink's pricing, accessories, and whether it's worth it. I'm gonna load a network heavy game mode. And just as fast as our regular Starlink, within like three or four seconds, we're already in a game. Right off the bat, this feels exactly like our residential Starlink. There's no hitches or stutters whatsoever. And if we check out the latency, which is the round trip time for the communication to happen, we're sitting at about 40 and that's the max I've seen. So far, we've been at around 25. I've been gaming on our residential Starlink for over four years, and you would never ever notice you're on Starlink. It's just as good as all the other high-speed providers. And take it from me, I'm very familiar with our internet. I work completely from home. I was actually expecting this mini on games to be just a little bit laggy, just to feel that latency, but I'm very surprised. Genuinely, I haven't felt any sort of problem. And I know you guys have a ton of questions about specifically how it works for your setup. So make sure you comment them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them the best I can. But again, I am pleasantly surprised by this. Like I'm very surprised. I'm giving the mini for gaming a 10 out of 10. Well, this is enough screwing around. Let's get to the next part. By the way, do you think it's worth it? Would you ever use it? Or would you just not ever need it but think it's a cool piece of tech? Make sure you comment below. This is the size comparison between our residential Starlink and our Starlink Mini here. The form factor is the coolest part it's got going for it, but the fact that we just tested it and it performs the exact same as the one we've had on the tiny home, that's pretty crazy. It means that we could replace that one with the Mini and not notice a difference. Keep it mounted on the roof when we're home, take it and travel with it around the world when we're not. But the difference is that having the Mini on an unlimited plan is more expensive than our residential fixed one. So it all depends, hey Sadie, it all depends on what you wanna use it for. Which brings us to the price. The Mini is 399 Canadian dollars or 299 US dollars. And by using my link in the description below, you can actually get a free month for yourself by signing up for the first time for Starlink. And depending on your geographical location, you might even be able to get a heavy discount on the hardware, whether it's the mini or even the standard, like the one we have on the tiny home. So use that in the description below. 
And remember, there's three different service plans for the Mini. You've got the Standby, the Roam 50 gig, as well as the Roam Unlimited. One of the biggest things going for Starlink, along with its portability, is the fact that there's a ton of accessories out there. Third-party companies have made batteries that can fit in this slot right here. That way you won't need any of the cabling to power the unit. It'll be completely portable and you can put it anywhere you need. But Starlink does make lots of hardware as well. They make lots of different kit mounts to mount on your home, on your van. They have lots of different additions for powering or networking. And it's all on their website that you can check out. This has a lot of options and I can really see how this is really useful for a lot of people. And I'm still kind of thinking of keeping it. But as I said before, do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes. I'm a huge gearhead and I love stuff like this, which I can use as backup and preparedness that sits dormant for only $7 a month, but allows me to use uh, emergency messaging if need be. And I can switch the plan at any time for high speed internet or unlimited. That's pretty cool. But the question is, is the Starlink Mini worth it? Absolutely yes, and here is why. If you're someone who doesn't have cable access, fiber internet access, or is being charged an arm and a leg from those dinosaur internet, satellite internet providers, and you're looking at Starlink for the first time, it actually might be worth getting the Starlink Mini rather than the standard one that we have on our tiny home, and here's why. It's fully portable. It's fully customizable with lots of third-party things. You can just mount it on your home and keep it fixed in place, but you can also remove it and travel to many, many places in the world and still have internet access. You can go camping, go to your cottage with all of the same internet, paying the same monthly fee without a different line added onto it. It has all the same functions as our standard mount. It's got snow melt. It has basically the exact same speeds and performance and latency as the one that's fixed in place and it's all in a portable package that you can do so much with. If we were starting again and I didn't have the Gen 3 Starlink mounted, especially coming from the lifestyle we had where we were in our van, this would have been an absolute game changer. We can stay fixed in place, we can travel with it, we have internet in a place where it's very hard to get cell service, where we lived off grid because it takes a very little amount of power, this is one of the coolest things I've seen in a very long time. And little kid David would have died to even just play with this for a minute because of all of its functionality in a small package. I think that the Starlink Mini is one of the coolest pieces of tech out there right now. And that's coming from someone who has a lot of experience with other Starlink products. If you already have Starlink like us, should you get the Mini? No, there's no reason to really, unless you're going to be traveling a lot. If you really want Starlink, you're convinced now, but you can't decide between the mini and the standard residential like the one we have. If you're traveling a lot, get the mini. If you're going to put Starlink on your home or your cottage and never touch it ever again, just get their standard residential. If you're off grid or a van lifer like we were, and you're wondering the power difference between the mini and the standard residential one we have, uh, it's very small amount of power difference. We were pulling usually around 35 watts for our standard, and it looked like today that it was sitting around 20 to 25 watts for the Mini. But if you get snow where you live and you have snow melt on on the dish, uh, it uses a little bit more, about 45 watts on our standard. I don't know how much it uses on the Mini because I don't have snow melt, snow to melt at the moment. Also, if you were thinking about putting the mini on your home or your tiny home, because the Wi-Fi is embedded in the actual dish and you want better coverage elsewhere in your home, you can buy the cable and the router, which you can extend into your home to get better coverage. And with all Starlink products, you can create nodes, which is like a way of extending your coverage with your Wi-Fi. So we have a node in the washroom, in addition to the one we have in the tiny home that extends the coverage on our homestead and allows me to get internet access in the DIY shipping container or by the chicken coop. And one last thing, if you want to just use the standard residential Starlink, but in roam mode, which you can just like the mini, it's the exact same cost. I just looked it up. 
So it's that $189 Canadian per month for the Mini Unlimited, and you can turn your residential standard into the same one for the exact same price. So hopefully that's a lot of information that'll help you decide. So are we gonna keep the Starlink Mini? You know I want to. I would love to keep the Starlink Mini, seven bucks a month, standby. I don't think we're going to. I'm probably gonna return it. Really cool piece of tech. We just don't need it. I don't need another one in our life. We didn't have that 100% I grabbed this, but um, I think we're gonna return it just because we don't need it. But thank you so much for watching to this point in the video. If you haven't yet liked the video, please do so. It really helps me out and it means I can continue to bring you free content. Also, hopefully I earned your subscription today. I'm always doing lots of stuff, hands-on DIY from scratch here on the homestead. So make sure you follow for that and I'll see you on the next video.